Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Compelling Conversations podcast. Today, I'm really excited to be joined by a great friend, Zuhair. Zuhair, thanks so much for being here, man. Yeah, so long, everyone. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Omar, for having me here. I'm really, really honored and excited to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to have you, man. And I wanted to begin by discussing that uh, you have so many different styles, and that that means like fashion, like like clothes, but also like hair too. I think that's really cool. And um, something that I noticed was that when you change like from a regular hairstyle to like a slick back, it's like night and day where you like become a different person. I'm curious if you ever felt that and um, if that that's something that you've like consciously noticed or not really. Um, yeah, like um, <laughs> number one, thank you. I appreciate that. I really like your style as well. That was the first thing I noticed about you that one day it was I met you December 1st 2021 at a hot cocoa stand and the first thing I saw was your hat and I really liked the style like this is a cool kid um anyways thank you but um uh for me yeah I appreciate the compliment um (laughs) uh, my name is Zoo Hair right and so I really like uh experimenting with my hair and stuff um but just like (laughs) overall looks like style like um I feel like like most of the time I'm going to school I'll be like wearing sweats and a sweatshirt and like a cap maybe but like for like special events I'll like dress up and stuff and that's where like I guess most people see me and so but like your question about being like you know night and day do I feel a difference yeah because I feel like like looks it kind of like um the way you dress and style yourself helps with I guess for me personally like my confidence and like helps me like you say like become a different person not necessarily to become a different person but like feel more confident in myself um that is one thing that like um <clears throat> like one of my I guess like insecurities like you know like not looking good or whatever I don't usually care but I guess that like um during events whenever I do like switch it up it does make me feel a little different and not everyone will like the way I look but like I'm not really dressing up for them dressing up for myself mm. really so I kind of like like if I like the way I look then boom that's that's what that's what I like and it's always like fun to like dress up and try something new and experiment different things yeah I love that I noticed like when you, you get dressed up you literally like command the stage you know, it's like, oh, my God, like, who is that up there? You know, it's really cool. No, it's still really, really nerve wracking. Like, like, I'm like nervous to be on this right now. Like, I'm yeah, like, I really, really enjoy talking and like public speaking, and all that stuff. But I'm like, extremely like, I guess, like nervous excited, like nervous and excited about it all. Like, I love doing it, but I get scared. Yeah, yeah. And what, um, what is that fear like for you? Like that nervousness, what is it like for you? So it's like, like, it's, it's ironic because I love speaking to people or like being on stage or like, like in high school, I used to do the morning announcements and it doesn't matter. I used to do them every single morning. Right. So I should be used to them. But every single morning before I spoke, before I went on, I was like, I would have like butterflies or like anxiety. And for me, it's just like, it's something I love doing and people like, it'll be people I know usually, I guess that I'm speaking to um, or even as people that I don't I just there's always that sense like public speaking I heard recently it's like one of like the things that people fear more than death it's like Mm -hmm. you can like mess up or what people think of me and even though I don't honestly at the end of the day I don't care about what people think of me or like I don't even if I mess up it's like you just messed up you know life goes on it's still like that big huge fear and like the anxiety that builds up my chest and it, every single time I go to like um, up to speak or anything, but it's just, I, didn't, I like love doing it. So that's what pushes me through. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. And I was just thinking like, you said every single day you had to do announcements in school and every single day it was like, you'd have that butterflies in your stomach. And I think about that, like, yeah, it's like, you could really translate that to anything in life. Right. It's like, mm-hmm. even though you do it once, you'll still be a little nervous about doing it again. Even if you rack up the confidence, even if you do yeah. pull it off, there's always that sensation. It's interesting. Especially if there's like a different factor involved in like that one a day or something like different about that day, you're doing something a bit extra or more. And it's even more like, oh my gosh, like, ah. Yeah. And I imagine the solution to overcoming that is to just do it. Am I right? Yeah, just dive right into it. Because at the end of the day, like you're going you're gonna to be doing it regardless. Might as well just like jump right into it and like, go for it 
in high school yeah. we also i was like in improv we had like a one of the biggest things was like if you fail fail big i don't know if that's a big that's the greatest advice but that's kind of like what the mentality in that is like you know just go for it and dive right in yeah what do you think fail big is trying to imply or instill inside of a person basically like you're gonna be doing it regardless right like go go all out like just go for it like don't don't be shy to like put yourself out there um at the end of the day it's like whatever you're doing uh for example one thing speaking on stage that's just like like one, that's one thing that you're doing in that day like your life moves on after that like just go for it and put on a show yeah no i love that and what about like um so you're putting yourself out there you're just doing what you're doing what how does patience factor into that because you could like keep your chin up and keep doing a thing for as long as you do. But what if it like always kind of tumbles down? How do you keep your chin up? How do you hold on to that patience? Do you think? Yeah. Patience is one of like the most valuable things in life for me personally, because like, I feel like no matter what problem I'm having in life, whatever issue, like one of the solutions, if not the biggest solution will always, always be patience. Like, like wait it out, like go through it, keep going, what you're doing, what you're doing. It doesn't matter if like, you're feeling this sort of way about something or something else happened in your life. Like it could be like um, a loved one passing away or like even something more simple, like, oh, you're not like doing good in like school or like your grades, whatever it might be. I feel like at the end of the day, like patience is like what keeps you going. And like, like you're going to, you're going to keep living life. You're going to keep on moving. Right. Might as well like have your mindset ease down and slow down and like, like have slumber, like be patient in like what you're doing. Like, it just helps things become easier. And, and then the question is like, yeah, I'm going to wait, but how long do I need to wait for this like to go away or for me to feel better? Like nobody knows the answer to that. You just, you, you have to like keep, like eventually the pain will go away and like things will become better, but you just have to keep on moving. Yeah. It's just the the concept of the walk eh? mm-hmm. yeah. Like just trusting in God. I'm curious if you don't mind me asking, have you ever had moments in your life where, um, your mindset was kind of like apocalyptic, like, oh, man, um, I, like you said, school, for instance, like, oh, my grades are terrible. And you feel like it's the end of everything. And if you've ever like felt apocalyptic, how do you um, how do you hold on to like coming out of that? Yeah, so definitely. Um, for me, I'm Muslim, like religion is one of the biggest ones for me. Um, it, like there's so many scenarios where like like last year for me my freshman year of high school uh, sorry freshman year of college I keep bringing back high school man I need to let go of that but like last year I was a freshman in college right and the semester started off horrible for me which thought like like the year in general just wasn't one of the best ones because of personal things that was happening to me and that felt like my life was like oh so messed up but um and then this year I felt like better even though there's like it's life you're gonna have problems here and there so it's it's very, very easy to think of apocalyptic thoughts here and there. But for okay, for me personally, it's like God, like I have like a religion, like, you know, like praying bring, brings me peace, like knowing there's so many different, like, that's like a whole different conversation going into like Islam and like everything happens for a reason. God doesn't put you through struggles you can't handle. That's its own like different segment that helps me feel better. And then other things are like environment, like having family and friends, people in your life that you can fall back on. Um, and just like, like knowing you can, you, you having someone to go talk to, whether it's like a family, a family member, a friend, a therapist, anyone that's like there to just like to listen to you and like be there like that helps a lot. Cause if you keep everything bottled inside, it just gets worse and worse and worse. And you just like need a person there to listen to you. And then the, I think the final one is at the end of the day, no matter who you have in your life, you it's just going to, at the end of the day, it's always going to be you. And depending on what you do. And like what your mindset is. So if you're not changing your mindset, and even if you're getting all this advice from religion, all this advice from your friends and your family, if you're not changing your own mindset and um, thinking that things will become better, then like you're going to stay in those apocalyptic thoughts. You're going to stay thinking things are dark and gloomy. Like you're not going to really get out of that if you yourself don't pick yourself up and, and change. Yeah, I love that. I'm curious, have, have there ever been moments in your life where, um, you didn't understand why something didn't work out and then it took time and you're like oh I see it now right now I'm actually in one of them for something something else I'm not at the moment yet where I'm like oh I see it but I'm in the kind of like thing like why is this happening but I trust like a lot trust God and everything but yeah in the past I feel like one of the biggest ones that I overuse like I just said it right now 
uh, my first year in college, I, I had started off the college year, like one of the biggest things I've always wanted was like a good group of like friends, I guess like guy Muslim friends that I, and I got that in the summer before college. And then within two weeks that went away. And so that made my entire like, I was like, why, like what's happening? I felt like, I felt so depressed that first year of college. And I'm like, you know, like, oh, like why is this happening to me? Like my life, I have no friends, blah, blah, blah. But like, I'm like everything does happen for a reason. It took me, it took me a year. Cause yeah, I made a lot of acquaintances, made a lot of friends, like, you know, had my religion, had like, I was doing, I was doing pretty good in school as well. Like, even though there are so many factors that are amazing and great in my life, I still felt, I still felt depressed. I still felt bad. It doesn't matter how many good things were coming my way. It's just like another good thing after another. And that sounds very ungrateful and selfish, but like, it took me an entire year to like, really realize like why God did, like why things in my life happened the way they did happen, because I had to lose those people in my life for me to be where I am now and for me to keep going where I am. And I've gotten other amazing people that come into my life, right? And so like everything truly does happen for a reason. And yes, I've had many, many, many of those moments where it's like, dang, why is this happening? And then it's like a little bit later having that patience. It's like, oh, okay, I can see why this happened. Maybe I don't know the full scope, but this had to happen for me to keep going. Yeah. And I, I always like to reflect on that story of Jacob and how, you know, when he lost his son, Joseph, Yusuf, and it's like all those years, it's like not understanding, like, why did this happen? But still, like having your reliance on God, like, hey, I just I only share my sorrows with God. And it's like in the end, it really paid off, you know, because Joseph was one of the richest men in Egypt and had all that power and prosperity to his family and his people so i think that's a, a cool story that kind of like um echoes that message eh? yeah yeah i'm curious you, yeah go good ahead. No, go, no go ahead no it's cool you can you can say what you wanted to say i was wanted to ask like because um i feel like we often hear like from us i wanted to hear like on like patience and everything like with you and like you're like because you're, you're like a really really interesting friend of mine where every single conversation i have with you is always like it could be like a simple conversation but i feel like it's like really goes really in depth and i feel like re- it's like really unique and like special right i feel like y- you have like a special way of thinking about things so like for your own personal life have you like um what was like your biggest way with like patience or like is that something that you utilize in your life or like uh well, what do you mean exactly like uh for me like you know how you asked about um like being patient and everything and how that affected me with my life like like would you say like that that's something that you use heavily in your life like patience patience yeah like uh i'm i'm it's becoming something that's uh that interests me more it's like since the past year um one of the stories that i really like and that is often on my mind is the story of Zechariah. You know, the prophet and um, the Abrahamic tradition who him and his wife, they became old people and their only wish was to have like a child. And, um, you know, they didn't have one even up until old age, even though that they asked so sincerely. And then, you know, Zechariah, he comes to see Mary, right? Mother of Christ. And he sees like the angels have like brought her like these gifts and all this sustenance. And when he sees that, he's like, wow, like if God could do that for her, like I have to hold on to my trust in him. I have to be patient. And so he remains patient. He remains vigilant. And he like still prays, you know, and he's like, I I trust in God. Even though he's an old man, you know, even though his wife's an old lady, he still holds on to that hope. And there's still that patience. And then, you know, eventually God does grant him a child. And so I, I think that story is something that, um, it's uh it's endearing to me and i hold on to that and i think about that but yeah patience is something that's that's fascinated me a lot these days because we never know what's going to happen with our lives or how we're going to get there and it's just the curiosity that keeps us awake i guess are you there yeah i'm here can you hear me I can hear you. Your camera, I think, got frozen. Yeah, I think it froze. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm back. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, but that that was uh, what I had to say about that. Awesome, yeah. Thanks yeah. for asking. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, I was curious about that one. Yeah. 
You know, you do like a lot of great things in a bunch of different organizations. Like I see you, you really are a man of service and you really do care about people. Like I've seen the empathy in you and I admire that. I'm not just saying that to toot your horn. I really mean it. Where does that come from for you? Like what makes you a man of service? Um. Yeah, so uh, I appreciate the that. Um. For me, I think it's really like from what my parents have done when I was younger. I never really met my grandmother like fully. Um, she passed away when I was very, very young. But I remember all the things that my mother have my mother has told me about my grandmother and like my grandparents in general. But specifically, my grandmother like used to always like do like so much for like for like it doesn't matter like who like you know like anyone walking like down the street like it doesn't like she used to like do so much and then like my mom and like my parents my mom and dad used to like they used to when I was a young child I used to see them doing that and I feel like that's not something they like sat down and talked to me about but that's something that like watching them kind of like went through me and then like at the end of the day like it also just like feels nice to like make others smile and make others feel like people feel happy and that goes into like different Islamic things as well um of like you know like even like a smile is like a form of charity right and so like if I can like make someone else like brighten up their day by just like smiling to them and that's something I can do with like with simple ease no like that doesn't take any toll on me it's all I have to do is literally smile and I can make them feel better like that makes me feel better and so it's just something more natural that I guess I don't you don't necessarily think about it's just something that you you do um have you ever like been yeah sorry go ahead no no no, I, I was gonna say I don't know if I answered the question but go ahead yeah no thank you for sharing that I was wondering if you've ever sacrificed yourself for the sake of others or for the service of others and where might like the, the balance be in like, you know, being of service to others while not like at your own sake or at your own peril. Yeah. I'm not sure if I ever, I guess would say that I sacrificed myself Um, as for things like, you know, like time or patience or energy or like, just like it taking a toll myself. I wouldn't say necessarily like, you know, like I sacrificed that. Um, Everyone gives a certain amount of like whatever they can on like, you know, like um, energy or time towards certain things. Like you said, I am in different organizations, but like it's kind of like a two way road where like I am in those organizations and like I can help other people. But like in doing so, like it helps me like mentally because for me, like being in like extracurriculars organizations, like that's my hobby. Like I enjoy doing that. And it's not like, I'm not there just to be there. It's because I I only I only join organizations where I enjoy and I know that I can like help either make a difference. I can be utilized in the best way for that organization. And burnout is a real thing. So even though I am across many organizations, like I'm only there because I enjoy to be there. Because if I was to go do something that I didn't enjoy, then there'd be no point. Like I just feel like, why am I here? What am I doing? But I only go there um, to certain ones because that it is my hobby. It makes me feel happy. Um, and so burnout is real, but it's like, I only do to whatever extent that I can. And, you know, there is a certain boundary where it's like, you don't want to over pour yourself into every single thing. Cause then it's like, it gets too much for you. It'd be too, you too spread out across everything. So yes, there is boundaries. Um, I, I wouldn't say I've really crossed them myself. Um, I wouldn't say I sacrificed anything for the organizations or anything that I'm in. Um, but I just really find like enjoyment through them. You seem like a man from what I've seen who isn't too concerned about the spotlight, but you have more of an interest in like teamwork and sharing like the victory, so to speak. Uh, would you agree to that? Yeah, for me, like people, I think like one of the things that helps me grow is having others surrounding me that like like I, I don't like to be by myself. I like I, there are certain times when I need to be by myself. I'm like, yeah, like I just need a break from everything in a sense. But most of the time, majority of the time, like I need others around me to like help me grow. Like I really, really love being in company of like people who I love, people who I can like talk to. Like I don't like necessarily being alone. And um, yeah, like I, I like t- I like I like being on a team. And like, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but I like, I like others, like it, the others, other people and surrounding myself with like the good, righteous, like a good company. Like that's what helps me really grow. Like brotherhood, um, just all of that together. Like that's what, that's what helps me thrive. Like, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, why do you think it's important to kind of like lift others with you? What's important about that, do you think? Because I mean, like, if you only lift yourself all the way up to the top, like, it's kind of lonely up there. Like, what are you doing at the top of here? Like, by yourself, might as well help someone else. And like, like, whatever, it doesn't matter, whatever it is, if you can help someone else grow, like, why would you like not help them? Like, um, whether it's like, someone like, like um, in one of my organizations, like we have like committee members, right? Like my whole job is like, is they're not just there to help me. I'm also there to help them, like help them like learn, teach them new um, aspects to whatever, like whatever thing that we're doing and helping them grow in that, that aspect to like where you can help, you, you, you have something that you can teach them. Why would you not give that if you have the ability to? So like I'm gifted with certain things. Other people are as well. We can help each other, um, but yeah. Yeah. And is there ever a balance to that? Like, um, like hoarding yeah. things like hoarding help? Is that can that ever be a good thing? Or what do you think? Uh, hoarding help and like, like, uh, what do you mean? Like, like you could help can... someone, but you like choose not to type of a thing. Okay, yeah, there is certain circumstances where it's like you can help someone a crazy much a crazy amount and it won't, it won't really help them. It's like giving a man a fish and feeding him for a day or teaching a man a fish and like uh, helping him feed him for like a lifetime. Like if I just, if you just keep giving and giving and giving, like sometimes that's not the most useful thing. It is, it's more case by case. Like, but there is definitely a boundary there where it's like sometimes helping somebody or giving them something might not really, really be helping them. You kind of have to like step back and look at the whole big picture and like, what can I do for this person that will actually be beneficial for them? And sometimes that's not a decision you make yourself. You have to talk to the person too and see like, you know, where they're like, where they are at. Cause you, if you just like making a decision for them, that's not, that's not helping them either. So yeah, there's definitely um, a boundary there. Yeah. And as a leader in, you know, different organizations and whatnot, what do you think is like, what do you suppose is the greatest thing that you've learned from leadership? Um, I feel like one of my favorite quotes is like, um, being a true leader isn't forcing others to bow down before you, but it's encouraging and inspiring others to stand with you. And that's one of the biggest things. It's like, you can't do anything by yourself, really. Like being a leader is more than just having a fancy title or like doing a bunch of work or like, like just being there. Cause if you're not like truly a part of that organization, then like, why are you a leader of it? Like you need to be like amongst the people like you, like you need to be like friends. You need to like enjoy being there and like being, a, if you're a leader for it, you need to like um, truly be there. And so like, I feel like one of my favorite things is just like really like being with like the other people there and just like, yeah, I you can always like fall back on that. That's cool. Does the community make you feel like uh, you're a part of a mosaic? Yeah um yeah <laughs> uh, community, <laughs> sorry um You're community good. is yeah when I'm, i think i think i keep like repeating myself i'm sorry for that because i don't know how to like fully put things into words i have like a lot You're of good. thoughts and then You're i can like, you know get them out but um community is really special because of all like the different um you like you can always meet someone new and someone like special and there's like so many different like things that like like blossom out of like each person that you meet yeah no for sure and when it comes to something like friendship um there's plenty of friendships that are like uh, they're born and then they bloom and then they die and um how do you when those friendships die are you okay with letting them pass on or how do you deal with that? Yeah, I mean, moving on is like a way of life. Like if that friendship isn't meant to like, if, if, if there's nothing sustaining that and there's no point in that, then sometimes you do have to let that go. Like um, I've had a lot of friendships that I've just, you know, like moved on and it's not necessarily a bad thing or um it's just something that you know happens like like I said before like sometimes you need to like move on past that in order to help you yourself grow more because that that certain friendship might not be the most beneficial for you it could be holding you back um 
so yeah that how i deal with that is just seeing if this is is this truly the friendship that i want to keep or is it something that might not be beneficial for me or them as well and so if it's not for both parties then you know maybe it's time to move on and i would let that go yeah how does a person cultivate selflessness okay um you have to not think about yourself okay so that's a that's a good question like going i guess going into the going into any situation or circumstance like you always like think i would say like selflessness it's not just not thinking about yourself like you have to factor in yourself at the at, during the situation as well but like you always think about the other person or the other the other party in that sense and like how is something like really like affecting them or like um how are you affecting the situation and then going from it from there yeah yeah selflessness requires um like i guess a, a an ego death i'm curious if you've ever experienced ego deaths and how those experiences have transformed you yeah can you define the uh, ego debt yeah kind of like um a bit of your pride dies and you recognize it like oh wow that's what happened damn and then you kind of like yeah are reawakened but a little more selfless yeah i mean those could be also good cuz it's like you know it's not good to have like a super huge ego or like a lot of pride um and i feel like it can come in forms where like you would not even like you wouldn't you wouldn't even like um you wouldn't even like understand <laughs> so um so an example is like i like like a one doa would be like you know like like um take away like arrogance from me and then i would have a situation in my life where it's like something would happen and i would i would be praying for something to ha- like i don't know how to s- describe it without giving the exact example but i'd be praying for something in that situation to happen for me right and then the exact opposite happens and it's like i step back and i'm like whoa right and then it's like i take a minute to be like i did ask like yeah allah like take away arrogance from me and i'm like whoa like this this like, this is really humbling me this even though i was asking for something after for the situation like i had made the wa before that was asking to take the arrogance away from me and now this situation that's come up it's humbling me now i'm more like you know like um like whoa like i took a step back and so those are really really important because if you like yeah you keep building yourself up but if you keep having a bunch of pride like that's not that doesn't even like feel good like if you just keep bo- like boasting about yourself like like you got to have like a good balance yeah I've for myself I what is something I've been experiencing lately is I've become a man of fewer words. I'm not quite sure what the origin of this is or perhaps it's a phase, I don't know. But I'm curious if you have ever had those experiences of becoming a man of fewer words and if so what that experience is like for you. Yeah, I used to talk a lot. I know for people who know me now it's like you still talk a lot, but I do. But I used to talk like a lot um and it's like it's like sometimes like you said like you have to step back and just listen because if you just keep like talking and talking and talking like sometimes there's no benefit from that like you're going to be a different people you're going to be in different circumstances like like sit down and just listen to what they're saying and then yeah. you can like really really learn a lot and so yeah definitely um there's like tons of certain like I have so much to learn right so sometimes it's like taking a seat and listening to what they have to say and like truly listening and not just waiting waiting for to get your word out can really make a difference yeah like something i'm thinking about is like this conversation here right now it's like you and me we've been friends for like a year now which is wild feels a bit longer but it's like wow like i feel like for myself at least i used to like talk to zuhair like so much more like in depth and like it was like a different rhythm and now i'm just kind of gauging myself and i'm like you know like wow i've i've become a man of fewer words and even yesterday for instance like one of my cousins he was visiting from new york we just sitting you know in a restaurant and he's just next to me you know we're surrounded by all this family and i'm just thinking they're like like there was just silence between us you know and i don't shy away from silence but it was just one of those moments where it was like wow um i've become a man of fewer words 
And um, I don't know, it just interests me. And how like a relationship between two people, you know, for instance, like you and me, how it like changes over time. Something cool to yeah. think about. Yeah. I would, it's definitely not a bad thing at all. Like becoming a man of few words is actually like a really great thing. Like you don't want to always like be super quiet, <laughs> but um, you know, you want to like, um, like listen. So I think like that situation you had yesterday, like that, that's really important and like really cool. Even like it's your cousin, like you probably like, know him like forever, right? And so no, he's like, a little older, but you know, we still oh, had good chats. Okay, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, but yeah, like even just, like like those are those moments that like, it's like those little moments that are so important to your overall growth. I think. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, do you ever feel like um, you, you become silent because you, you don't think anybody really hears you? Has that ever happened to you? Yes. <laughs> Sometimes it, it's, it's easy to feel like your word, and your input isn't being taken. Like, yeah. like you're like saying so many things or you have so many ideas and it's like, oh my gosh, I think like my idea is like really, really good. Like I, I need to get out there. And then if being on a team or whatever you are, it's like sometimes like, no one's listening like like i'm yelling and no one's like hearing me right and so sometimes those are the moments too where you like sit back and like listen and then if truly after everything if you're you're whatever you have to say is really, really important then you can like say it when the time is right um but yeah those kind of connect yeah yeah it's a lot of things to think about and i really appreciate you sharing your input do you know like it's no secret, you know, you're, you're a great friend. I, I appreciate you, you know, and um, I'm wondering if, uh, if you had any closing thoughts, anything that you felt like you wanted to say, but you didn't get a chance to say, or something on your mind that you wanted to express. Yeah. Um, oh, I just like, really appreciate being here. Like one of the things I, when I think about you is like, like I, I, I have the honor of being here, speaking to you here. Right. And when I think about you, it's like, there's always something new. Like, like, I feel like I can relate to you with an, an analogy of like, like you're an, you're an author too, like reading a book or even like watching like a TV show. Just like, like whenever you read a book or watch a show, like I feel like you're transported into that, into that book, right? Like um, whenever you're like reading, like you're, like you're not living your life anymore. You're in that world. You're in that book. You're in that show. You're in that dimension, whatever. And it's like, whatever the characters are going through, like you're like living with them. And like, it's kind of like a break from your life. And it's just really interesting because like you can like just like dive right in. And I feel like every time I have a conversation with you, like I've known you like yourself like for a year and it's felt longer. But every time I had a conversation with you, it's like I've like I don't I'm not living life anymore. Like, I like dive right into something else. And it's like I'm in I'm in somewhere where it's like like time stop or like like it's like your conversation is so interesting to me where it's like I can like step back from life and just like talk and it's like casual and it's all just like chill and it's but it's like really really deep and i don't know but yeah, yeah i really really yeah no thank you i appreciate that and i i felt that what you're saying like with you i felt it like we'll be just standing and talking like wherever it'll be and it's like that outside world is just kind of like noise and it's just us talking so it's really cool and i, I appreciate you sharing that man feeling yeah, the same here so yeah thank yeah. you so much for having me here um yeah i was really, really excited to be on this and like i was nervous as well um but i really really appreciate you asking me to even like you know be on here and uh it was amazing having a conversation with you absolutely and i, I just wanted to share one more thing that i think it's so cool that you and me met over hot cocoa and it's <laughs> like you just never know like you know like i just heard like oh you know they're having like hot cocoa if you want some and then i would kind of walk over mm -hmm. there and then I meet you, you know, and it's like, you just never know how you meet a person or how life unfolds. Yeah. So hot cocoa, as it were. <laughs> we, need, we need to go get some hot cocoa now. <laughs> we do, certainly do. Make a full Shola, circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, it was amazing talking to you, Zuhair. As always, my friend, thank you for being here. And uh, until next time, inshallah. Of course. Thank you so much for having me, inshallah. Yeah. Until next time. Take care, my friend.